My name is Richard Shear, and this is Montpelier City Forum, where we're going to be speaking about town meeting. We have all of the candidates. We're going to discuss the school board in a separate show. We're going to discuss the city budget in a separate show. Tonight, we're in District 3, and we're in District 3 with Glenn Cobert Hutchison. Glenn, where in District 3 do you live? I live on Prospect Street, up on uh, just above the river, above Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> that, must be, that must be a pleasure. It's great, except it takes longer to, to, to get there than you'd think. You kind of have to weave your way down. But How do city in. services get up there? Is, is <laughs> snow removal good in, in that area? I would say that snow removal is pretty darn good on Prospect Street. It's a narrow, winding street, and uh, it definitely gets down to where it, it really is only one lane, and then people park in that lane. But, uh, you know, given the amount of snow we get, I think they do a great job. Now, District 3, given our gerrymandered... <laughs> Yeah, would I'm you, curious about would that. Would you tell us where District 3 is? For sure. So it's pretty much everything on that side of the river, plus uh, a little key of downtown uh, from Main Street uh, to Hubbard Street, bounded by Liberty Street. So if you walk past uh, uh, the pharmacies up Main Street, uh, past the library and so on, and then take a right on Liberty, and then take another right on Hubbard. You get down to the other side. Now, I know you've been knocking doors on District 3 and, and meeting with people and the like. What's District 3's concerns? It's a good question. I think that I need to do a lot more knocking and a lot more talking to, to, to figure all that out. Um, and that, that's, that actually is uh, one of the key things that, that I'm hoping to bring to the council is a certain amount of ongoing uh, engagement with people because it, as far as I can tell, uh, too many of Montpelier's residents in District 3 and everywhere else don't even know who the city council is, what district they're in, uh, who their representatives are. It's not everyone, but uh, it's... It's more than you might imagine, I would say. Um, apart from that, I would say that District 3 has uh, the, the, the same basic concerns that uh, Montpelier residents in general have. And uh, what would those be? Affordability, uh, maintaining city services, uh, increasing the, the uh, quality of the infrastructure in downtown and, and the rest of town, and... and I mean, I, I think that this is a repetition of my, my first theme, but really, I think that there is some sense of disconnect between uh, what the, the government does and what the residents expect or know is happening. Um, city council and city government has done a, a really good job, I think, of... Uh, improving that communication level. Uh, for example, the city clerk is, is doing great at, at keeping everything updated using Front Porch Forum and so on. Um, well, but they I think revised it could the city website. Yes, so yes. It, it which holds is a lot more information for than For sure. Used to. It's a lot more information. I think it could potentially be uh, more directed. Um, How so? That's a good question. I think... Uh, so this, is, this, I think, applies to the website, but the example I'm going to use is from city council meeting last night. I went to, to hear about the sprinkler ordinance and the, uh, the new art project. And what I saw at city council was uh, a group of really smart people uh, who... On which side of the podium? <laughs> oh, on both, of course. <laughs> on all sides, all around it. Uh, what I saw was a certain amount of... Um, difficulty in simplifying the language enough that, that it, was, it was clear to everyone what was going on, um, both to the, to the uh, uh, viewers in the audience and, and uh, back at home, and also to the city councilors themselves. They, they seem to have, have trouble keeping up with just the, 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 the process, you know, who's moved what, uh, and so on. And, and that feels unnecessary um, when for example, when, when uh, uh, the new sprinkler ordinance um, 
or that is the, the revised uh, sprinkler ordinance, basically repeals uh, the, the sprinkler ordinance except that uh, restaurants, uh, if, if you change a business to a restaurant, you need a sprinkler now, which is not under this, the state code. But the fact is that, that there are uh, an awful lot of pages of text that boil down to more or less state code and if you change a business to a restaurant then you need to add a sprinkler. And I think that uh, the city could be well served by having a little bit more of that translation uh, for the website um, and for uh, the, the city in general. That, that uh, a lot of this stuff can be boiled down um, and, if not made interesting, at least made uh, How would you change the annual plan? That's, uh, <laughs> I think that that's a taller order than I have at the moment. Um, uh, or the annual report, yeah. because that's a, a voluminous yeah. document. Yeah, and, it, and, and I think that... that um, What I would strive to do um, is try to boil it down into one page. Um, not to, to take away the rest of it, but, but to say, okay, here's one page that, that gives you all of the, 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 the strongest, uh, most important changes, most important things that you really should know, and, and uh, put that right in the front. Bill Fraser, I have to say, already does a, a very good job of this, but uh, I think that there is space to even pull that in a better direction, and beyond that, to um, to, to to move beyond the text-based uh, uh, systems of, of information exchange, the the gigantic phone book of the city report, the the network of uh, different web pages on the city website and say we can you know talk in person about these things uh, that's one of the key things that I think I can offer um, is a little bit more of a public presence uh, and talking in person one of the things that I'd like to, to implement if I manage to get on City Council is uh, a weekly public hangout. Say I'm just going to show up at 8.30 every Thursday at one of the downtown cafes, maybe rotate between three different ones every other week uh, or every three weeks. Um, and whoever wants to show up can show up and uh, you know I'll tell them what we've been talking about most recently and what I think is important and ask what they think is important and, and, and see how to, to move forward. How do we deal with, with the question of um making the city affordable. Uh, you had spoken of affordability. Aye, aye, aye. What does affordability <laughs> mean? Well, so I think the angle I come at that question from, um, maybe from the, the, the lower side up, uh, I make a reasonable amount of money working at the drawing board. Um, and my partner Kate Stevenson makes a good amount of money and we, we, we're okay. Uh, a lot of my friends are young, uh, less well employed, um, and really have not that many great options. I have uh, a friend who's working two jobs, three jobs, two jobs plus she's an artist, um, which I think is a job. Uh, and living in a, a, a really substandard split-up apartment that's, I think, in danger of falling into the river, and there is no other place where she can afford to live uh, in Montpelier. It's getting a little better. There are openings possibly, but, but I think that there are a lot of people in town for whom um, that's what affordability that's, what can the, that's what can the, the problem. city do to, to change that, that market dynamic? And I think, uh, so I should say, I'm not uh, completely well versed in, in exactly all the levers that the city can pull. I'm curious about uh, learning more about that. 
my impression is that the city has been doing a, a, a difficult and good job of trying to uh, increase housing at all levels and, and definitely focusing on affordable housing. And for example, I think that it's a great thing that we're finally um, getting into the upper stories above Abishan. Seventy years, is it? I, I was just been, about to say, that's yeah. one of those projects, yeah. like Taylor Street, yeah. like Saban's Pasture, <laughs> it's one of those projects we've been working on a yes. long, or at least talking about. Yeah, and, and I mean, I think that that's a, a, a great move, and, and I think that it's um, a testament to the, to the hard work of everyone that's, that's uh, focused on that for so long. Um, I'm hoping that more uh, like that, finding spaces that are currently unused, clearly there are a lot of them, and making as many as reasonable into uh, housing and as many as reasonable of, of that into affordable housing. Um, and then personally, I am in favor of building more within the, the downtown and, and in the, the, where, the... Where downtown? It's a good question. Let's see. And one that I haven't considered yet, so I'm going to try to no, fake it up. Please. Um, exactly where downtown? Where would we have housing downtown? Yeah. Where, what would you repurpose? Because the downtown <laughs> is already purposed. It's pretty dense. Yeah. I mean, I think that the the clear answer to me is some of the land around Saban's Pasture and in that area. Um, now, you've been following that one for a long time. What, <laughs> yes. What's your feeling on Sabin Pasture development? What, what do you think realistically we can see? Oh, gosh, I'm not good at predicting. I can tell you that uh, I come from um, uh, an odd angle on this one, I think, because, because I grew up uh, in a beautiful, leafy suburb of Boston, um, and my parents uh, renovated my grandparents' garage into the house that I grew up in with my siblings. And we had acres of beautiful pine forest that was owned by a, a gravel crushing operation that had, hadn't been used in decades. Um, and basically, that was where we lived. We just wandered through the woods every day and hit each other with sticks and, and you know, not too hard most of the time. And, um, and when I was 12, uh, that whole parcel got bought up and developed into McMansions. Um, so that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible, and and it was I think it was one of the uh, the formative events of my young life. So I am not. It's really hard for me to 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 say. I think we should we should take open land, and build houses in it. But at the same time, where I grew up was all suburb. It was just house, 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 house. There was not that much open land around. It was, it was, um, it was sprawl already. It was all sprawl. Uh, here, I feel like we have a really different set of resources. Uh, there is land that we can, um, can change to uh, allow people to live on it and use it uh, without uh, harming anyone's ability to walk out the road and, and find a piece of beautiful forest to walk in. That's something we're amazingly wealthy in, and I love it. Uh, you, can, you can get lost and be completely alone uh, within... Well, we've got 100 <laughs> acres behind, uh, behind the state house. For example, yes. yes. And, and, and uh, it's one of the things that I love most about here. Now you work downtown. Yeah. You live near downtown. Yeah. So obviously you must have thought about, envisioned what downtown Montpelier could be. Yes. What, how does your vision vibe with Net Zero's vision, the one that, that won the $10,000 <laughs> competition? Oh, man. I, uh, that was a, a, an awful lot of fun to, to follow that um, process. I think that um, that... Those visions, the visions that were in competition, uh, were all, maybe not quite all, but a lot of them were, were really uh, exciting to me. And I would exciting in what way? Uh, so I'm a pedestrian. 
Um, I walk everywhere, and I love to be able to walk anywhere that I want comfortably without having to hop snow banks and, and um, you know, dodge too much traffic and so on. Um, and that, I think, that ability to travel at will within the city um, without a car and at a slow pace is something that uh, I value above uh, most of the rest of my daily life. I just love the, the, the walks. That's what I like. And, uh, and I think that the, the focus of a lot of those uh, projects on human-scale transportation within the city and around the city and, and to nearby locations was really uh, heartening to me. Um, and then also, I have to say, uh, as, as uh, pie in the sky as, as some of it sounded, the idea of connecting national life more directly to downtown with, with some, a tram. yes, with a tram or, I mean, right. with a ski lift, with something, you know, put a, put a ski hill down that little hill or something and, and, and get, uh, allow all those thousands of people to, to just zip down to, to downtown and allow the people downtown to zip up and get a nice view. I think it would be great. Uh, of course. How do we pay for it? Yes, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, on city council, I will uh, investigate that question. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how we pay for that kind of thing. But I was fortunate enough, I have been fortunate enough to travel um, in Italy and Japan and uh, through some of uh, Northern Europe. And there are such things, and people use them all the time trams, that is, or, or just, you know, simple, small-scale uh, person-size conveyances or, you know, small crowd-size conveyances. And, and uh, while they're expensive to build, they're amazingly attractive. Uh, and it would... I haven't worked out the budget. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't imagine there's not As a, a way. As a single city council person, <laughs> fortunately, that's not your role. Your yes, role yes. is to collaborate on yes. that. Yes, and, uh, yes, and I'm very pleased with the idea of collaborating on things like that. I, I think I would uh, do that. When we speak of, of, of budget, yeah. we always come back to something you mentioned at the very beginning, infrastructure. Yeah. I don't think there's a single person who doesn't <laughs> complain about the infrastructure of Montpelier. Yeah. Well, how would you address that? And what do you see the issue as? How do you get your arms around infrastructure? Um, man. I think, again, personally I come at this from uh, the point of view of a pedestrian for the most part. So I think I have a different uh, personal take on, on what uh, is required uh, what's what a priority is um, from that point of view uh, I think that just getting a transit center is already a huge to my mind infrastructural uh, advantage because suddenly we have uh, transportation that, that that people can get to um, without having to walk down the bike path and hop the tracks uh, and go up to the park and ride, which is what I've done for years. Um, infrastructure more broadly uh, feels to me like just one of those things that you just have to fix and, and it's going to be expensive and you have to do as much of it as you, you, you can do every year. My impression is that, that we have honestly been doing a, a, a really good job of that since I've come here. Um, the roads have and that's improved. Been how long ago? Again, since, uh, let's see, I moved here in 2009, so. What changes have you seen in the town since 2009? Uh, it's been interesting to me to see the, the churn of downtown restaurants, for one thing. Um, Is that healthy? Is it, does that <laughs> reflect a healthy environment or an economically less healthy environment to see that churn? I think that there are a couple of ways to see that. Certainly, there's always going to be some in and out. Um, right. Restaurants, especially, I think, are, are can be ephemeral. Um, at the same time, to me, uh, one of Montpelier's best assets is its uh, 
amazing amount of talent and energy around food and drink and uh, the, the, the finer things of life. We have um, Three Penny Tap Room, for example, is, is you know, a, 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 a destination for people from amazingly far away. Uh, the Hunger Mountain Co-op by itself is, is a destination. Um, and I feel like we've seen a bunch of really interesting small-scale initiatives that I wish had been able to uh, maintain themselves longer than they did. Of course, some of that is the choice of the, the people who started them. But for example, SALT um, was fantastic. Bo right now in that, that space is, is a wonderful thing to have, and I hope they stay Over around. Over on Barry Street. Yeah, on, on Barry Street. Um, not quite my district, but I, <laughs> close, close. <laughs> pretty close. Uh, and uh, uh, Philomena's that, that uh, recently closed was a really um, charming place to be, and I, I, I loved believe it there. it's the Vietnamese restaurant that's moving into the Philippines. Is it? I place. don't even know. Right. That's good news. I, I, I'm not breaking any, any news. And I might <laughs> Only be to wrong, me. So please. <laughs> Only to me. I didn't. I hadn't heard that. Um, and then, so one of my public roles in town is that I, uh, I was one of the people who started the front gallery um, down on Barry Over Street. Over on Barry Street. Right. And so um, a couple of summers ago, we had a friend of ours, Chris Gleason, uh, start up a little uh, pour-over coffee shop that, that uh, landed in the gallery for, for uh, morning hours. And uh, he I called have it to tremolo. Ask, what is a pour over coffee? Yes, shop? okay. So uh, we should really, you should invite Chris Gleason on your show <laughs> to talk about pour over coffee because he will give you a demonstration. He's a wonderful guy. Uh, right now he works at Kismet, uh, I think. Yeah, last I heard. Um, anyway, pour over coffee is, according to some, the, the, the purest, most uh, wonderful way to experience any coffee that you like. Uh, and it's also one of the simplest methods of brewing. How do you, we've got a limited amount of time in a, in a few minutes, how do you do that? Uh, it, it, it's, uh, you have your cup, you have your uh, uh, funnel, you have your filter, you have your water at a very precise temperature, you have your, your grounds at a very precise weight given the amount of water, and you pour in, uh, in turns and let it settle, and it just drains right into the cup. And it takes about five minutes or so. Again, you should have Chris to get the, the details in. But it's, it's nothing more uh, complicated than that. But again, if you are really into coffee, that is the way to, to prepare it. Any other way uh, has downsides. A city council <laughs> meets in, in March. Yes. If, if you get onto council from District V, you're going to be in a meeting, in a retreat. Yep. They're going to have a whiteboard, and they're going to say, OK, these are our goals and objectives for this year. Yeah. And council people will come in and say, I would like to see this addressed during the year. Mm -hmm. And when Rosie was on the show before yeah. she got on council, she said, I want to make sure that the sprinkler systems are addressed. And it actually came to a vote yeah. yesterday or at the meeting. What are, what are two things that you would want on that whiteboard? I think that the, the first thing really is straight back to uh, community engagement. This is something that I uh, feel strongly about, and I want to try to articulate it carefully. Um, we have a wonderfully small community. We have, is this a city or a town? It's a good question, and I think I was prepared for this question. <laughs> somebody somebody tipped tip the, uh, the, the wink to me. I think that we have a town here, uh, and it feels like a town to me. It feels to me like I know most of the people that I run across, uh, and and that's that's I think what my my personal unofficial definition. So w within that that uh, context, I don't think that that problem that I was addressing before that that there are people in town who don't even know what district they're in who don't know who their, their counselors are. And I don't think that that's necessary. I think that we can, um, we can practice a less representative democracy and a more direct democracy. Boy, you've been here nine years and you've watched city council 
Is there a city council person, present or past, who had that same kind of vision that, that, that you're trying to project? I would say that city council already tries to do that. And I think that they're not doing a bad job at it either. Uh, but so one in particular who okay. reached out like, like you would think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say uh, the, the three that I would sure. name would be Ann Watson, Justin Turcotte, and Rosie Kruger. Boy, that's diplomatic. <laughs> why, why those three? I think, and, and I'll say this, uh, understanding that I, this is my personal viewpoint, and I think that I, but, but I think that I say that because those are the three who I have been able to speak to most myself. And so I see that they are public figures, they're in the, the public eye, and they, they are just around circulating and talking to people. Um, which is one of my favorite things to do. And I, and I think that that uh, is something that we can encourage and, and uh, really do more of uh, across the board. So I don't know that uh, it's not that I want to force other counselors <laughs> to, to uh, take walks into the neighborhoods and so on and, and, and uh, hang out with me at the cafes uh, in the morning. But I think that we can we can recognize that within the, the small community town that we have, we can connect every individual person to city government almost directly. Now, city councilors sit on boards. Yep. They sit on community uh, agencies that, that we fund. Yep. Someone will sit on the Public Safety Commission. Someone will sit on the library. You yep. know. Which one would you choose as an external if you had your choice. <laughs> if I, I mean, I think I would uh, choose at least a couple. I would love to be involved with the library. It's one of my favorite places in the world, is any public library. Um, and then uh, I believe there's a couple of different committees or groups that deal with uh, bicycles and pedestrians. There and, and are. There's a transportation exactly. committee. So, so that, I think, again, is near and dear to my heart. I, um, I want to make it as easy as possible for everyone to, to get around in town uh, and to, uh, to enjoy traveling in and through town. If someone said, I'm interested in moving my family to Montpelier possibly, yep. what would you say are the strengths? What would you, how would the you strengths, sell our community yeah. to somebody who sits and says, I don't, I've heard things about Montpelier, but I want to know from somebody <laughs> who's who lives here. Yeah. How would you describe it in just a, a few sentences? I would say we have a beautiful confluence of rivers, uh, a wonderful uh, density of uh, businesses and friendly people right in downtown, and a wonderful expanse of uh, open land surrounding us in all directions. Um, those are important things to me. And then I would say that we also have uh, a surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, but a, 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 a gratifyingly open community that, that people uh, are, for the most part, willing to speak to their neighbors to, to uh, solve problems through confronting their neighbors in a, in a friendly way rather than, you know, backstabbing and gossip and so on. It feels to me like we have a, a, a healthy, uh, argumentative <laughs> sometimes, uh, and uh, a, a really, um, I would say it's, it's like a, a, a mostly friendly big family. And, and, and I like that sense that, that, that it is, again, it's small enough that, that everyone is just about connected to everyone else. Just a few degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you see them downtown, you see their, their brother downtown, you see their dogs. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a good size. I want to thank you, Glenn, for not only coming and talking to me, but for running for office. My pleasure. And I want to sit and tell people, please watch all of these.
They're all great candidates. And I'm very, very pleased that all three districts have challenged races. Yeah. And uh, watch our, our presentation on the school budget. Watch our presentation on the city budget. Uh, but most importantly, also read the bridge. Yes. Because the bridge went out of their way to interview our candidates. But most importantly, get out and vote on town meeting day. Make sure your friends get out and vote. And make sure your family gets out to vote. That's the vitality of our community is the engagement. Sit on a commission. Sit on a, on a planning board. You know, do something for our community. And thank you very much for watching.